I've been on campus for six years now. Uh, prior, I, I've been in charge of the the OER stuff for about five years. Um, prior to that, um, there was a, a librarian named Andrea Glaspie Steinhelper that um, basically set everything up. I am going to be blatantly obvious. I am basically just riding off of her coattails. Everything I've done since then is just building off and continuing the the work that she she started before she retired. But my understanding is that she uh, started um, with an exceptional faculty grant. I don't know if it's the same on other campuses, but here we have a foundation um, where people donate and, uh, you know, faculty can apply for grants. Um, and she started with a faculty development grant that, uh, you know, would pay out to faculty that were, um, that were going to convert their courses to OER, you know, to kind of support like the conversion process and, and everything, you know, one of the, one of the, you know, pretty standard grant ideas, um, and got a, a small cadre of faculty that were really invested in the idea of OER and low cost materials, um, and then from there, uh, it, it kind of expanded into, um, we call it the, the OER advisory group. So it's not a, it's not a, an official full-fledged, uh, campus committee. Um, but it has representatives from almost every single department, um, you know, teaching department and then, um, other interested, uh, stakeholders like advising the bookstore, um, we have a print shop that handles uh, printing, you know, copies for the bookstore of OER, you know, book. I kind of headed up. The other librarians are um, involved as well. Um, my dean, uh, who's also over the the library uh, learning commons here, um, she is a member. Um, and we try to meet uh, once a quarter um, as needed, um, just kind of discuss what's going on in the, in the, uh, you know, in their departments, um, you know, we hear from, you know, if there's anything with students, you know, either in the bookstore advising. Um, and so she set all that up and I've just kind of been, like I said, kind of writing her coattails and, you know, we've had members come in and out. Um, but everyone involved is invested in improving OER, um, and, you know, getting that outreach. Um, thanks to Andrea, we have a good amount of faculty on campus that, either use OER or understand the benefits of OER and um, low cost. I tend to kind of group those two together. I know, um, you know, it's it's better that students use OER because it's, you know, obviously for them free. Um, but there's, there's some material that just isn't, you know, either OER compatible or um, faculty just aren't finding what they need. Um, so I tend to group the low cost materials in with that. Um, and thanks to what she started um, and the cadre that we've been able to build up, um, you know, we have multiple members across every um, faculty department that are invested and supportive of OER. Um, I have never once received any pushback from any of the faculty. Um, you know, there might be disagreement about like the labeling uh, policy and that, you know, not being able to prorate, you know, things that are used across courses um, and across quarters, uh, yeah. but they understand the reasoning behind it. You know, none of them have really come out and said, oh, this is a stupid idea or any, you know, anything even remotely close to that. Um, and I really think that it's thanks to what Andrea started and, you know, finding those faculty within each department that um, was supported. The benefit of my position is that I am very centrally located. Um, the learning commons here at LCC is, I, I don't want to, you know, toot our own horn, horn, but we are like the hub of campus. Um, you know, we have faculty that come in and do their office hours here. Um, we, you know, we get when um, the uh, the coaches bring their athletes through, like they always make sure to come by the learning commons and talk with us. We've fostered a very um, deep sense of community and customer service here. Um, and so even if I'm not like, you know, having this like official laid out onboarding process, um, deans are still, and, and department chairs are still bringing their new faculty in here to meet with us. Um, you know, we're the learning commons. So we have e-learning, we have tutoring and the library all together. Um, and our e-learning 
director. She is amazing. Um, and, you know, just highly respected on campus. Um, our entire e-learning team is. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we don't have that formal, like, okay, I'm going to sit down with you for, you know, an hour to talk about, you know, how OER works on this campus. But when they come in, you know, their first couple of weeks on campus, like I make it a point of talking with them about what, what I offer as a librarian and, you know, the library offers and also OER. And, um, you know, a lot of times I'll point out, Hey, you know, you're in uh, the Lang and Lit department. Well, Abby Levins is, you know, really invested in OER or low cost. Um, if you have any questions about, you know, what we can do there, like she would be a great person to talk to, or, Oh, you're in natural sciences. You know, here's this, uh, here's this instructor. I know that's really invested in it. Um, so we kind of do it like a really informal, but also, um, so each, uh, academic year when they release like the new, like the, you know, schedule, um, you know, to the, to the deans and to the department chairs to start, you know, adding courses, um, I will go through and, um, mark the courses I know are OER low cost department chairs know like, Hey, I've done the, the, um, OER materials. Can you share with the faculty, make sure that I haven't missed anybody or, you know, that I got something wrong. Um, because one of the, one of the things that I want to avoid, um, is telling students, Hey, this course is OER low cost. Oh, yeah. And then for them to find out it's not. Um, so I tend to be really conservative in what I, what I marked down. Um, you got kind of making them aware that it's, you know, available ear to the ground, so to speak. And, you know, talking with, uh, you know, members of the advisory group, but also, you know, faculty around campus. Um, and so I, I try to know, try to be proactive in knowing, um, but it is very central in that I do a lot of that data, data entry on, you know, like a spreadsheet and then office, office of instruction does it on the CTC link side. Um, and then, uh, you know, the faculty work with the bookstore to, you know, purchase any materials. Uh, in my work with office of instruction and with the, the bookstore, um, we make sure that I have all of my stuff inputted before things are available for registration. So that's my deadline. In fact, I have, uh, I have everything up to the fall basically done. Um, I'll go, I'll go back through, um, after the summer quarter starts just to double check the fall, make sure things are ready there. And then in the fall, I'll do winter and spring. Uh, my goal is to have it, to have things as set in stone as possible prior to registration. Um, so that, you know, obviously I don't want to put any more work on office of instruction people like they are already swamped as it is. Um, that's my biggest thing is just making sure that number one, we're saving students money, making it easier for them. And number two, that they're not being misled on, on their courses. Um, if I have any doubts that a course is, you know, OER or low cost, I just leave it blank. Um, and then they can find out at the bookstore that, oh, happy surprise. Yeah. So I can, we kind of, you know, we, we do have it in the catalog and in the class schedule that it's, you know, classes OER or low cost. We have those two differentiated, um, but it starts at registration.